listening to PetLifeRadio.com. The Pet Doctor is brought to you by Dog.com. For everything and anything dog, shop Dog.com today for all the top brands. Greenies, Frontline, Kong, Nylabone, Royal Canin, and more. Shop at Dog.com and use the promo code SADDOC, S-A-D-D-O-C, and get $15 off your order of $75 or more. Is your pet stressed out? Does your pet need annual vaccines? Which pet is best for a child? Would you know if your dog was in pain? Pet Life Radio presents The Pet Doctor, where you'll learn everything about keeping your pet healthy and happy. From pet care, pet meds and grooming, to pet food, pet insurance and dental care, this is the place to find out everything there is to know about pet wellness. Whether you have a dog, cat, reptile or rabbit, you'll find answers for your pets straight from the vets because it's your pet. Health matters. Please welcome your pet doctor host, veterinary media consultant and veterinarian, Dr. Bernadine Cruz. Probably the only time you think about rabies is when you need to get your dog licensed. Some might think that getting a dog vaccinated for this antiquated disease is just a ploy of local government to get more money out of pet owners. And why don't cats need to be vaccinated? Besides, rabies is an eradicated disease, isn't it? My guest today is Peter Costa. He serves as the Director of Global Communications Coordinator for the Global Alliance for Rabies Control and Campaign Coordinator for World Rabies Day, celebrated on September 28th. Peter, we'll be right back with you in just a moment. Please have a seat in the waiting room. The doctor will be with you shortly, right after these messages. There's a movement afoot, ShoeBuy.com. Join the millions of people who shop ShoeBuy.com's over 400 brands and 500,000 products. Order now and get free shipping and free return shipping. ShoeBuy.com, the world's greatest shoe store. Walk your dog in style and comfort. Enter the code DOCTOR, D-O-C-T-O-R, at checkout and get a 10% discount plus free shipping at ShoeBuy.com. Love your pets but wish their medications were a lot less expensive? They are at 1-800-PET-MEDS. You'll not only save on flea and heartworm medications, but on prescriptions for arthritis, incontinence, thyroid, and more. And you get fast service, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Plus, our licensed pharmacists ensure accuracy, monitor drug interaction, and more. See why over 5 million people have trusted their pet's health to 1-800-PET-MEDS, America's largest pet pharmacy. Call now or order online. Go to PetMeds.com forward slash doctor, D-O-C-T-O-R, to get 10% off any order and free shipping on orders of $39 or more at PetMeds.com. FTD's network of over 40,000 florists around the world have been creating beautiful handcrafted arrangements for 100 years. Each arrangement is delivered the same day and backed by FTD's seven-day satisfaction guarantee. For a century, people have trusted their most important occasions to the flower experts at FTD. Since Pet Life Radio is all about puppy dogs and flowers, our listeners, that's you, can get a 20% discount on your order. Just go to florop.com and use the code DOCTOR20 at checkout. F-L-E-U-R-O-P dot com, code word D-O-C-T-O-R and the number 20. Welcome to Sassy Seniors, a show about our fabulous older dogs and cats. I'm your host, Kelly Jackson. You know, I wanted to create a show to really showcase our senior pets. And, you know, as a human population ages and lives longer, of course, so are our wonderful pets. But many of us with aging pets, it's so interesting. We have a tough time realizing or really admitting that they are seniors. So, in a way, I kind of like to think of our senior pets as, as wise puppies. What do you think about that? Be sure to join us for another day of Sassy Seniors. And remember, celebrate your senior pets. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to The Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio with Dr. Bernadine Cruz. The doctor is in and we'll see you now. 
Peter, thank you very much for being with us because this is something that's quite important and a lot of people don't realize that rabies is still killing people in the world and the United States. How serious is this disease? Yeah, thanks, Mary Jan. Maybe I could start by just backing up and talking a little bit about the disease itself. Uh, and a lot of people don't know, but rabies is a deadly uh, yet preventable disease um, that infects the brain. And it's caused by a virus that's uh, passed from an infected animal to an uninfected animal or human through saliva. And our skin actually serves as a nice protective barrier through which the virus doesn't enter. But when our skin's broken, for example, through a, a scratch or bite wound, uh, the infected saliva from rabid animals can, can enter and start to cause the disease process. And uh, sadly, once symptoms of rabies are present in any animal or human, uh, death is almost certainly inevitable. So, uh, but However, it's important to remember that even after an exposure to a rabid animal has occurred, uh, the disease can be prevented in humans if the bite wounds are washed with lots of soap and water and the bitten person gets prompt rabies treatment. I was taking a look at your logo for World Rabies Day, and I found it very interesting because on the logo is a person, the outline of a bat and a dog. Why were those three put on the logo? I think that brings out um, an important question of why rabies uh, remains an issue, and there's really uh, several reasons, and not the least of which includes the fact that uh, rabies still claims human lives in the, in the U.S. and around the world, and uh, of course necessitates the administrations of thousands of post-exposure tr- treatments each year. And uh, this is because rabies is still pre- prevalent in wild animals, and every unvaccinated pet that lives within our own family setting has the potential to uh, bring rabies back into our homes and expose us and our loved ones. And uh, perhaps most important is that statistics show children uh, experience the highest number of dog bites and rabies cases across the world. So when we look at, uh, for instance, the image of the dog and the child, it's very for that re- reason that the logo was built upon that. In the U.S., for example, dog bites are actually the fifth most frequent cause of why children are taken to the emergency room. And there are actually four and a half million Americans that are bitten every year. And every one of those bites involves considering whether uh, the animal involved may have had rabies. Um, And as you know, in the worst case, if the animal's rabid, it does have to be destroyed and the victim has to undergo several doses of uh, life-saving rabies biologicals. And uh, if an unvaccinated pet is bitten, for instance, by a a rabid skunk or fox or a potentially rabid wild animal, it uh, must either be euthanized or undergo a a lengthy and lonely isolation period. And this causes tremendous sorrow for the animal owner. Um, So I think it's most important to mention that all these scenarios can be avoided by simply heaping our pet's current on their rabies vaccination. Well, so far you've mentioned a wild fox and a bat and dogs and such. Now, for the listening audience, is it true that any mammal can develop rabies? And I think most people would look at a bat and not think of it as being a mammal, might even think of it as being a bird. Yeah, that's correct. When we look at what animals can get rabies, some of the most common animals are cats, dogs, foxes, raccoons, skunks, but also bats, like you mentioned. And I think it's remember, uh, it's important to remember that rabies is a disease that can infect any unvaccinated mammal. Uh, and pets and other domestic animals like horses and cows, as well as humans, are all at risk of getting rabies. Uh, for instance, from wildlife that may be rabid, uh, or even from unvaccinated domestic animals that may have been in contact with rabid animals. So when an animal is, well, maybe I should back up a little bit. In the introduction, I mentioned, okay, most of us don't think about rabies unless you get that notification from the city saying, all right, your pet needs to be licensed and you need to show a valid rabies certificate. Can you kind of give us an idea? Why do you think that cats don't typically need to be vaccinated for rabies or at least licensed? Right. And while I certainly can't speak on behalf of animal control agencies, it is certainly absolutely vital that all dogs, cats, and ferrets over three months of age are vaccinated against rabies. Um, As you mentioned, there are a lot of uh, indoor cats, but a lot of those cats do inadvertently get outside. Uh, But also we see a lot of uh, homeowners that find bats in their homes. Uh, And certainly uh, cat owners uh, will tell you that if if there's a bat in their home, the the cat's going to be the first one to find it. And so it's important that at those times, uh, our cats that serve as our firewall between wildlife and and our loved ones uh, are vaccinated and current on their rabies vaccine. 
I totally agree with you because I know when a cat sees a bat, first thing they think is, ah, it's a bird. And most of these animals, if they're infected with rabies, they're not going to be the strongest flyers. They may be in their death throes. So the cat goes, wow, this was an easy one to catch. In reality, they're getting exposure. Are bats in a home fairly common? I live in Southern California and... Knock on wood, I've never had a bat in my home, but is that a fairly common scenario in the United States? I don't know how common it is. I do, that's actually, I'm actually not sure, Dr. Cruz. Okay. I'm not sure about that, how how common it is. Um, Certainly, there is a lot of good information on the CDC uh, rabies page about bats in homes and how to protect your home against bats, Uh, but I'm not really, um, I don't think I can really speak as to how common it is. Well, that's fair. So with a bat or a raccoon, because I know raccoons are fairly common source of rabies in the United States, what would somebody notice? You know, say, gee, I think this animal is seeming a little bit strange. What may they see in that wild animal that can tip them off? This is really one you should stay away from. Sure, yeah. Um, One of the first signs of rabies in an animal is uh, usually a change in behavior. Um, and I think it's important to remember that there's a lot of health conditions that can cause a, a pet or an animal to have a change in behavior. Um, but rabies is a progressive disease, so the health condition of the animal will only get worse um, until it dies. So if we look at uh, pets, for instance, um, animals that have rabies uh, usually stop eating and drinking, uh, may want to be left alone. Um, some early signs can include a, a change in the tone of their voice. Um, because the virus can in, uh, in affect the voice box. Um, we can see uh, chewing at the site of the bite, uh, loss of appetite, and even some other subtle changes in behavior. Um, and after those first signs of rabies appear, uh, some animals become very aggressive and bite other animals and humans or uh, even inanimate objects. Um, but there are animals that may also become very docile and are difficult to wake up. Um, but rabies in animals quickly develops into uh, paralysis, and, paralysis and sadly uh, will end in death. You were saying earlier on that if a per- person is bitten by a rabid animal, or really in this case any animal, it's so important to clean it very well and then to go ahead and seek medical attention if it seems appropriate. Now, I always thought that, boy, you get bitten by a dog, and if you don't know anything about its background or maybe a raccoon, you're going to have to undergo these horrible injections into your abdomen. Is it still as bad as that? Not at all. In fact, there are some simple life-saving steps. If you are bitten, you should wash the wound, like you mentioned, with soap and water and and seek medical attention immediately because if caught early enough, post-exposure treatment, which includes thoroughly washing the entire wound, injecting rabies immune globulin into the wound area, and receiving a a series of uh, four or five injections of vaccine uh, in the upper arm uh, will prevent rabies. Oh, that sounds much better than the thought of getting it in the belly. It's just, I'm sure it doesn't hurt any more in the belly than it does in the arm, but it just sounds like it would just be so horrible. I found some very interesting statistics on the CDC website that they're talking about rabies, yes, being due to a virus, and that Every year, about 55,000 people die, I guess this is in the world, and that's a person every 10 minutes. And you say it's really a preventable disease. Why is it still so rampant then? Yeah, most of these deaths occur due to the lack of awareness, uh, really, of the danger involved or because um, uh, people that just cannot afford treatment. Uh, Most of the human deaths occur in Asia and Africa where dog rabies uh, hasn't been controlled and and some poor families uh, where multiple children have been bitten, a lot of times a a choice must be made about which child to treat. Um, Mm. In other cases, families uh, must sell all of their valuables in order to pay for the vaccine. Um, And again, most human deaths occur in Asia and Africa where dog rabies hasn't been controlled, but even in the Americas and in Europe, uh, human exposures and deaths also occur. Uh, however, these are mostly after exposures to rabid bats. This is just a horrible situation. I'm talking right now to Peter Costa, and he is the Director of Global Communications for the Global Alliance for Rabies Control and the Campaign Coordinator for World Rabies Day. We'll be right back after this short break. Please have a seat in the waiting room. The doctor will be with you shortly right after these messages. At Petco, we really love pets. 
there isn't anything we won't do to make sure they're getting the best products and the best care. So when you ask us a question like, So how do you feel about cat condos? We can say from experience, Feels like home. For her. Enter the code DOCTOR10. D-O-C-T-O-R, the number 10, and get 10% off any order. No minimum at Petco.com. Hello? Danica, where have you been? Oh, Graham, I've been busy, you know, racing, GoDaddy girl. Oh, I built my own online store with GoDaddy. Really? Let me see. Grandma'sAuction.com? Hey, Grandpa's golf clubs. Grandma needs her bingo money. Use promo code Dr. 10, D O C T O R, the number 10, and get a dot com domain name for just $7.49 at GoDaddy.com. Love My Pets, the new single by Mark Winter, available on iTunes. That's it. You're madder than a junkyard dog, and you're not going to take it anymore. Your feathers are ruffled, your dander is up, and you've got a definite bone to pick. Join us each week on Pet Peeves, the show that lets you dig through the dirt and unleash your passion for pets. Your host, pet expert and award-winning author, Amy Shojai, will talk about what makes you howl and what hisses you off. Pet Peeves, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to The Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio with Dr. Bernadine Cruz. The doctor is in and we'll see you now. Peter, I was looking at some uh, news information that came across the internet today and you're talking about Asia and oftentimes you and I don't think about it, you know, you, I'm sure you think about it all the time, but uh, vacationers, oh, I'm going to go out to this beautiful island of Bali and here's these white sand beaches, I'm just going to go relax and sit on the beach and have a marvelous time. Well, I understand in the island of Bali that rabies is rampant and that they're actually going to have... Oh, let's see, what was the number? It was just a huge number of dogs that were going to be vaccinated for rabies. It was in thousands. I can't remember exactly what the number was right now. Over 200,000, I believe it's going to be. Numbers like this, is that common in most of Asia where they have just huge numbers? Um, I wouldn't say that it is common, but we do see um, pre-exposure vaccination being provided um, you're talking about pre-exposure for humans? Well, I found it now. Indonesia is going to vaccinate 400,000 dogs against rabies oh. on the resort island of Bali because the problem there and their dogs was just so huge. And I guess the, the U.S. government actually had a notification to vacationers, stay away from all stray dogs. It just wasn't something that uh, they thought it was definitely a health risk. So in Asia, if a vacationer is going to Asia, to Africa, is this something that they should be aware of, that rabies is that rampant? Yes, and I'm uh, sorry, there was two, two things there I think I'd like to address. One is the mass vaccination of the animals. And what we've seen... 
um, in countries that have eliminated rabies, uh, particularly in the dog population, is that when we see a herd immunity or a, a vaccination coverage of 70% of the dog population, that rabies becomes, uh, rabies in humans uh, basically dwindles down to zero. Now, when we look at travel um, to countries where uh, canine rabies is running rampant, there's a second way to prevent rabies with a preventative vaccination called pre-exposure vaccination. And pre-exposure vaccination is recommended for people who uh, may have a higher risk of exposure to rabies, such as uh, veterinarians or, or rabies researchers, uh, but also for visitors to foreign countries with rabies and a lot of street dogs uh, may also want to consider getting vaccinated. Now, across the world, children make up the majority of dog bite victims and rabies patients, and therefore, uh, giving pre-exposure vaccination to children who are living in or, or traveling with their parents to some of these high-risk areas uh, should, re should really be vaccinated. Well, I know when I was in veterinary school my senior year, I was vaccinated for rabies and then recently had a titer done to make sure that my immunity was still high enough as a protective level, and thankfully it was. And Maybe another question is, okay, we can vaccinate all these dogs. If we vaccinate all these dogs worldwide, would that just eliminate rabies? Well, I think we have, what we've seen is success in vaccinating about 70% of the dog population in communities has eliminated rabies, but we do still see rabies in wildlife. Um, but the main vector or the main reservoir the main cause of human rabies across the world is the dog. And so by eliminating rabies in the dog population, like we've been successful in doing in the United States, and keeping uh, somewhat of control of rabies in the wildlife population uh, through oral rabies vaccine uh, programs and, and bait dropping, uh, human deaths from rabies have been eliminated um, almost to zero. How many human deaths did we have in the United States last year? CDC, I believe, reported four human deaths from rabies last year attributed to exposure to bats, I believe, all four of them. Mm, amazing. So having pre-exposure, if you're going traveling, is a good idea. Would it be something to consider to vaccinate all people against rabies, like people have been vaccinated for all these other diseases? Well, we've seen that... Um We've seen that to do that is not really economically feasible at this time. However, it should certainly be considered, and it is being considered in some countries where canine rabies is just um, completely out of control, um, particularly to vaccinate children. Um, but that is just, a, you know, one tool in our entire toolbox. I think um, it needs to be incorporated along with uh, animal vaccination and certainly a good amount of education about dog bite prevention, how to act around animals, and what to do if you are bitten. One of the things you're mentioning right now is education, and that seems to be the forefront of World Rabies Day. What is World Rabies Day? Who's getting involved in this? Well, World Rabies Day is an international observance um, that's held each year on September 28th, and it's really the time that we should all remember to take our pets to get vaccinated against rabies because uh, by keeping our pets vaccinated, we really not only protect their health and well-being, but we're protecting our own. And so World Rabies Day was established in 2007 uh, to raise awareness about the impact of human and animal rabies, uh, how easy it is to prevent rabies, and how to eliminate the main global source, which is the dog. And now today, World Rabies Day remains the only global event uh, of its kind, focusing full attention on the burden of rabies. Um, and it's been observed in 125 countries. Uh, we've helped educate over 100 million people, and more than 3 million dogs have been vaccinated across the world. Are dogs more susceptible to rabies, or are dogs just the ones that people have the most contact with? When we look at certain communities, and we have community dogs, and we have stray dogs, but then we also have own dogs that are unvaccinated, um, because of, um, you know, different beliefs and uh, the closeness that we have to dogs, and more importantly, the appeal uh, that, that dogs have to children, and, and children make up about 50% of rabies victims each year, they're very susceptible to being bitten to the dogs, and they're very susceptible to um, dying from rabies because they're bitten, you know, they're lower to the ground, and they're, they're bitten on the face and neck where the virus can move much more quickly to... Uh, more quickly to the brain. And so I think it's our closeness to the dog, the dogs in the communities, the stray dogs, the appeal of the dogs, 
particularly to children, to want to approach them and pet them, that makes it, I guess, more uh, likely vector. Well, I can definitely appreciate it because I know when I go on vacation, I typically can be away from any pet for about two days, and then I start going through animal withdrawals. And I see that dog on the street, or I see the cat out there, and I know I shouldn't do it, but I just have to go up and I just have to touch him and pet him. So some of that's because I'm a veterinarian, I'm sure, but I think some of it's because I'm just an animal lover in general. I was reading, as you mentioned, about half of the people who die from rabies are under the age of 15. That is just horrid. Yeah, it's it's um, quite devastating that um, children uh, make up more, like you said, more than 50% of the deaths. You know, and it's a tragedy. It's about 30,000 children under the age of 15 that are dying from rabies uh, each year. And I think that uh, there's some simple steps that we can we can take as far as education um, that we you know we can we can tell those children that we can tell people how they can protect themselves uh, in certain countries, their pets, and most importantly, the entire community from rabies. How can people that are listening right now get involved in World Rabies Day? Because it may not be as devastating here in the United States, but we still want to keep our children from being bitten by dogs. And, you know, yes, as you're saying, we do travel with our children, too. Yeah, and we certainly invite everyone to be a part of the activities and reach out to educate a child or or someone else that may not know about rabies. Uh, Some simple simple ways to vaccinate your animals. Uh, Many veterinarians and health authorities are hosting uh, low-cost or even no-cost vaccination clinics around World Rabies Day. I would uh, encourage everyone to check their local area. Um, Help us spread the word by hanging posters or uh, maybe send the fun health e-card that are available on the CDC Rabies website. Um, you can u- utilize social networks such as uh, Facebook and Twitter and even email to send educational messages to friends and family members. Uh, we have all different uh, merchandise. People can purchase World Rabies Day products such as a T-shirt or a mug uh, or donate to support local rabies prevention projects in other countries. Uh, even a small amount can make a huge difference around the world. Um, people can volunteer to help at an event or plan an event even such as a, a run for rabies. Um, we'd also encourage people to join our online community, and everybody can follow World Rabies Day on uh, Facebook and on Twitter and pass on the news uh, by telling a friend. What is the website? The World Rabies Day website is www.worldrabiesday.org. Well, this is something that is so important. I think a lot of people do believe that rabies is a antiquated disease. It's been cured. It's not out there. It is just the ploy by the government to get more money out of that dog and cat owner to get them vaccinated. But thank you very much, Peter Costa, for speaking with us today, telling us all about the serious nature of rabies, that it is truly a preventable disease, and the number of people throughout the world who are being impacted by this. Now with, uh, as you're talking about social media, maybe you can email a friend that uh, is living overseas, maybe living in Asia or some other country where they may not be getting as much information on this and educate them because, yes, I think the answer to all of this is education. Thanks, Bernadine. Well, it's been my pleasure. Again, we've been speaking to Peter Costa. He serves as the Director of Global Communications for the Global Alliance for Rabies Control and Campaign Coordinator for the World's Rabies Day. The Global Alliance for Rabies Control was founded in 2007. So this is not a fly-by-night organization. It is doing some very important work. If you want to learn more, you can go to www.worldrabiesday.org and www.rabiescontrol.net also, as well as the Center for Disease Control. Thank you very much for listening today. If your pet's not up to date on its vaccines, please get it into your veterinarian, cat and dog, and ferret, and make sure that it's updated on its vaccines. Thank you very much for listening. You've been listening to Dr. Bernadine Cruz with The Pet Doctor. Thank you very much, Mark Winter, for being the producer and editor of our shows. And please listen in next week where we'll give you more information so you can be the best pet owner that you can be. Thanks. Take care. Pets can be a wonderful addition to your life. Keeping them healthy and happy is important. Pet Life Radio presents The Pet Doctor with veterinary media consultant and veterinarian, Dr. Bernadine Cruz.
Whether you have a dog, cat, reptile, or rabbit, you'll find answers for your pets. Straight from the Vets, The Pet Doctor, on demand every week, only on PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> 